Okay. Thank you all for being here. We have with us the Suffolk County Executive Stephen Ballone, the Nassau County Executive Laura Curran. You'll hear from the, them in a moment. We have Chairman Joe Loda. You'll hear from him uh, in a moment also. We're also joined by Hempstead Supervisor Laura Gillen, Oyster Bay Supervisor Joe Saladino, Huntington Supervisor Chad Lupinacci, Assemblyman Andrew Rea. We have the CEO of the Long Island Power Authority, LIPA, Tom Falcone, President and COO of PSENG, Don, Don Eichhorn. Uh, we also have with us the Director of State Operations for the State of New York, Kathy Calhoun, the uh, Homeland Security Commissioner, Roger Perino. From the New York State Police, we have Troop L Commander, Major David Candelera, and we have the OEM Commissioner, Kevin Wisely. Um, as there's no surprise, we have a winter storm, and it is a dangerous one. Uh, it's combining a uh, couple of dangerous forces. Number one, we have a uh, significant amount of snow. On top of that, we have uh, significant wind, 25 to 35 miles an hour, gusts up to 60 miles an hour. Uh, and then we're expecting frigid weather uh, overnight, which is going to further complicate the situation. There are two different low pressure systems that are actually combining and causing the fury of the storm. We had expected the thrust of the storm to be done by about 1 or 2 o'clock. The storm is moving slower than originally anticipated. We now estimate that the thrust of the storm will be through 4 or 5 o'clock. Uh, at that time, the weather will start to get colder, will then, which will then compound the situation. Uh, snow removal chemicals, salt, calcium chloride, etc., are only effective up to a certain degree. Uh, when it gets down to uh, single digits or even 10, 12 degrees, those chemicals are less effective. So that's going to be an issue for this evening. I've declared a state of emergency for the downstate area of New York State. Westchester South, Westchester New York City, uh, and Long Island. Uh, we're seeing sustained wind gusts of 25 to 30 miles an hour, uh, depending between New York City, Long Island, Westchester, uh, some gusts 40, 50, 60 miles per hour. Uh, in Suffolk, we're looking at a total snowfall of about 9 to 12 inches. Nassau County, total snowfall of about 4 to 8 inches. Uh, through the duration of the storm. New York City uh, is looking at about 6 to 10 inches of snow through today. Uh, first, I want to thank all the elected officials who are here today. One of the benefits uh, we have is the close coordination among all of our different departments. And we're all working together as one unit to avoid any duplication. Uh, and to supplement each other's resources. If one town needs help, uh, one county needs help, we're all here working together and we're all coordinated. Uh, and that makes a significant difference. That hasn't been done in the past, but uh, we're doing that now and it makes a major uh, difference. The airports are, for all intensive purposes, closed. Kennedy Airport, LaGuardia Airport, the runways are closed. The terminals are open uh, for people who are stuck at the airport because their planes aren't taking off. But uh, if you were planning on taking off uh, today, I don't think that's a likelihood. Uh, MacArthur and Republic airports are also closed until further notice. Uh, the frigid temperature is an issue. It's going to be compounded by power outages. Uh, thus far, we have about 3,000 outages on Long Island, uh, which is not uh, a terrible situation. We've been through worse. But if you're one of those 3,000 homes and the temperature uh, drops this evening, that could be a potentially dangerous situation. So that's something that we're watching uh, right now. The situation on the roads is dangerous. 
it shouldn't be underestimated. Uh, people have said to me, well, you didn't close the roads, so I assume it's uh, okay to go out. That's not the fact. Uh, we close roads uh, in a very, very sparingly. When we close roads and declare a total state of emergency, uh, that shuts down everything. It shuts down businesses. Uh, it means nurses can't get to a hospital. It means doctors can't get to a hospital. So. Uh, we, we do that very sparingly. Uh, I declared a state of emergency, which means it is dangerous out there. Uh, the state police are on site today, but we can tell you there have been a number of serious car accidents throughout the metropolitan area already. If the temperature drops and we can't clear the snow uh, and it turns into black ice, that's going to be an even more uh, dangerous situation. So uh, please use extreme caution. If you do not have to be on the roads, you shouldn't be on the roads. Uh, and that's where every citizen has a responsibility. Because if someone goes out and gets stuck, uh, you get one or two cars stuck on the highway, it means we can't plow the roads because the plows can't get past. Uh, somebody gets stuck on the road, it means we have to send out a truck, we have to send out help, and that puts other people's lives in danger. So the responsibility is not just for yourself and for your family. The responsibility is for the other members of the community and the first responders who are out there trying to clean the roads uh, and get to real emergencies. So uh, citizen responsibility is very important. Uh, we also have opened the Emergency Operations Center, which means we have generators available, we have uh, heavy-duty equipment available. Unfortunately, this is not our first rodeo. We've gone through a number of storms. Extreme weather is here, and it's real. Over the past few years, we've changed the way we handle uh, weather conditions like this. We have more sophisticated equipment, we have more training, we have more coordination, uh, but still, it's no substitute for citizen responsibility. So we need people to do their part. Again, the thrust of the storm should be through by about four or five o'clock. Then comes the frigid weather, uh, and that's going to be the challenge over the evening hours. With that, let me turn it over to County Executive Stephen Ballone, and then you'll hear from County Executive Laura Curran. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor. First, uh, I, I want to thank uh, Governor Cuomo in New York State. Um, you know, the level of coordination that the governor is talking about is, is really unprecedented. We have not seen that. I was a town supervisor for 10 years before becoming County Executive. Uh, there was zero coordination uh, at, at the state level um, here. And I cannot tell you, I cannot em emphasize enough the importance of uh, preparation uh, for these uh, events. And we were uh, at the State of the State address uh, yesterday in Albany, and uh, we were able to meet with the top state uh, officials in emergency management and top leaders the governor was able to convene. County Executive Kern and I were able to, to uh, sit down and talk about the preparations and the storm. You know, you always hope for the storm to get better uh, as it gets closer uh, than predicted, but this is one of those that, um, <clears throat> you know, has really come in uh, as bad as predicted. And uh, that preparation is critical. And of course, uh, the governor bringing additional resources down and being very proactive uh, is something that uh, we have come to count on, rely on, and uh, are grateful for. Uh, we have um, had a number of accidents reported since uh, last night, as of midnight, when we opened up our emergency operations center, approximately 69 uh, accidents in total. Uh, and we've had a number of stranded motorists, to the governor's point, people out on the roadways. Uh, there was a sense this morning that, you know, the roads were still passable, you know, wasn't coming down, the snow wasn't coming down that quickly. And I was out and about on the roadways and I was surprised at how many cars were out there. Well, when the snowfall picked up between 9.30 and 12.30, we had 89 stranded motorists out on the roadways who called in 
certainly uh, additional others out there. Uh, and that's what happens when you, you don't heed those warnings, you go out uh, on the roadways, and you complicate the situation uh, for those emergency responders. And, you know, we've had our emergency responders out there. I want to thank them for the great work they're doing. We had a fire in Shirley that was reported, uh, house fire. Uh, two individuals were uh, rescued out of that house fire, uh, were, were transported to Brookhaven Memorial Hospital. Three officers responded. Two were treated at Stony Brook University Medical Center for smoke inhalation. Uh, and uh, all are doing uh, well at this point. And then a fire on Oak Island, which is uh, in the town of Babylon. I spoke to the mayor, Ralph Scordino. Uh, this is an island inaccessible by uh, road. Uh, there is no ferry to it. It is just by private boat. And it shows the importance of the preparation and the coordination. Uh, the Lakeland Fire Department had to respond with a hover boat assisting the Babylon Fire Department. Uh, and they were able to get uh, one of our Marine Bureau officers to the site with members of the Babylon Fire Department and the Lakeland Fire Department and assess the situation. Fortunately, the wind was such that there were only two structures that were damaged uh, on the site. Uh, but again, it's a reminder of the incredible work that our first responders do under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. That's why we do ask residents to, to heed those warnings, stay off the roads, uh, let the plow operators do their jobs, uh, and let those first responders, because when you go out there and you become stranded, you create even uh, more uh, additional problems for uh, the men and women who have to go out there and, and keep us all safe. So uh, again, we are going to continue to be out there. As the governor said, uh, because of the frigid temperatures, we are expecting freezing overnight into tomorrow. Uh, that means that uh, these roads are still going to be uh, slick, icy. The snow and ice is going to freeze on them. And that means those roads are still going to be dangerous, still treacherous, uh, likely uh, through tomorrow. So uh, we continue to urge caution to all of our residents. And again, thank you to the governor uh, for the coordination and the response from New York State. And with that, I want to turn it over to my good friend and colleague who is um, really uh, learning <laughs> how important snow removal is in uh, just their first few days on, uh, on the job, but is doing a tremendous job already. County Executive Curran. Thank you very much. Thank you, County Executive. Thank you, County Executive Ballone, for hosting this here in your county, and thank you, Governor Cuomo, for being here as well. I think your presence here shows how important this is, and you see the municipalities and the agencies represented here show that government really does work for the people. Um, also, I want to thank you, Governor Cuomo, for your leadership. This is just another example of your commitment to protecting Nassau and Suffolk counties, protecting, protecting Long Island. Amid this very heavy snowfall and dangerous winds, Governor Cuomo is providing resources and personnel to keep our streets clear and our residents safe. Nothing is more important than the safety of our residents, and I would echo my colleagues to say, please do stay off the roads unless absolutely necessary. I've been driving around Nassau County, and I think people are heeding the call. You do see some stranded cars out there, and I know our state police are out there helping as much as they possibly can, helping our police officers do their job. And also, we need to make sure that our first responders can get where they need to go. Thank you very much. We'll now hear from the chairman of the MTA, Joseph Loda. Thank you, Governor. Um, let me start off by saying uh, we've been preparing for this since uh, yesterday when everything became activated. Long Island Railroad employees have been out in force uh, last night and all day today, uh, clearing the ice from the switches and shoveling all the platforms at our 124 stations that we have on the railroad. What I think is also uh, to focus on is ridership we've seen is down this today. We, it's down about 20 about 30 percent, which is about 29,000 less people uh, were using the Long Island Railroad this morning heading uh, westbound into New York City. Uh, and we've uh, one, recognizing that and also realizing that New York City is uh, having some of its businesses are closing earlier. We've put out some release trains, new early release trains. A few minutes ago, a train had left from uh, uh, Penn Station from Ronkonkoma. We have a special train leaving to uh, go to Huntington at uh, at 208, Babylon at 222, and Hicksville at 324. We've had these advertised on our website and notified all the press uh, throughout the area of these uh, for the last two to three hours. So they've been uh, people have been aware of it uh, in New York City. 
Uh, as the governor has mentioned, this uh, is going to continue for some time. I am uh, concerned uh, about the freezing conditions that we'll have. You know, the Long Island Railroad is, compl is completely exposed to the elements. And so that all of our switches, all of our equipment is uh, on the outside. We are doing everything we can to keep our tracks warm. We have various different antifreeze trains, uh, as well as uh, other types of equipment to keep everything warm. Oh, I just went out right there, literally. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> There you go. And I just and anyway. had a heart attack. Yeah, no, I do too. I'm watching it. I'm literally watching it. Well, with that, let me, let, me, uh, let me switch for a couple of things because I know we're going beyond the Long Island area. Very, very quickly, Metro North, uh, the commuter railroad that is uh, in Westchester County on up, uh, it too is having very similar problems. It has already started some uh, early trains and they're consolidating uh, their trains overall. The New York City subway system is up and running. Uh, it'll continue to run through, as it always does, 24 hours a day. Uh, we're going to see more local uh, trains, less express trains, because we're parking some of our equipment underground to be outside uh, uh, and away from the elements. Uh, and then finally, regarding uh, for those who are driving uh, the bri our bridges and our tunnels, we have speed restrictions on all of our bridges, but two bridges in particular uh, have even further restrictions. The Whitestone Bridge and the Verrazano Narrows Bridge is uh, restricting uh, the number of uh, uh, trucks that we'll have on board. Uh, there will not be any trucks allowed on the bridges. Uh, mini buses and motorcycles will not be allowed on either the Verrazano or, or the uh, Whitestone Bridge uh, due to the heavy winds that are, uh, have started and will continue throughout the night. Thank you. That's a problem because I was planning on driving my motorcycle over the White Storm <laughs> Bridge tonight. Uh, as you heard, I want to once again thank uh, all the local officials here, uh, but especially County Executive Ballone and County Executive Curran for their uh, coordination. As County Executive Ballone mentioned, we started talking about this yesterday. We were together in Albany, so we did some pre-planning. Uh, but as um, Assemblyman Rea just pointed out, cars are uh, spinning out on the roads. Uh, on the way out, we saw a number of uh, cars stuck, cars in ditches, etc. Uh, every time that happens, it impedes all the progress for the first responders. And this is nothing uh, to be trifled with. We have had situations where people have been stuck on the Long, Long Island Expressway overnight. Uh, and it has been frightening. Um, and uh, to get at people and try to rescue people in the middle of the night uh, puts other lives in danger. So prudence, caution, responsibility, uh, common sense is the order of the day. We'll have a better sense later this evening. Once the storm abates uh, and the weather drops, we'll have a better sense of what we're dealing with for the evening hours and the commute tomorrow morning. Uh, but we have all the equipment is out. We brought equipment from upstate New York and we brought it uh, down to Long Island primarily. Uh, so literally there are about 400 plows that are out there now just on the state side uh, doing work. Uh, they'll be dropping chemical uh, to make sure we, we defrost as much as we can, depending on uh, how much the weather drops. But uh, safety is our number one concern, and uh, that's something we need everybody's cooperation with. Questions for myself or any of my colleagues? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> the, we have, there are gradations. I have declared a state of emergency. A uh, state of emergency allows the state uh, certain regulatory and legal uh, flexibility. Uh, it allows the state to set, for example, uh, travel bans, uh, speed limits, because in a situation like this, it doesn't make sense for each local jurisdiction to come up with their own set of rules, right? Suffolk decides the roads are open, but Nassau decides the roads are closed. It doesn't really uh, work. So 
in a, uh, an emergency declaration, uh, we have control uh, over local regulations. And an emergency declaration, by definition, says this is a state of emergency uh, and only essential travel. A gradation above that is where we say roads are closed <coughs> but for essential personnel. And then we define essential personnel. Uh, primarily first responders and people who work in the health field. Uh, and we can go to the next level, which is the roads are closed, period, except for people who are designated emergency officials. We actually started a system in the state that we call the red plate system, where uh, people who are emergency personnel have a red license plate. And those are the only people who are allowed on the roads at that level. So there are a number of steps we can take. Uh, at this point, I don't think it's uh, necessary to go any further than we have gone. But the question is a good one because, again, it depends on how people respond. And uh, if people are responsible and prudent and stay off the roads, uh, then we'll be okay if uh, we see the situation changing or if the weather condition changes. If the temperature drops and what you now see on the highways turns to ice, uh, there's very little you can do when the roads turn to ice. And if you get uh, too low from a temperature point of view, the chemicals are useless. Uh, and an iced roadway is the most dangerous situation. So we're going to continue to monitor. Depending on what we see, uh, we can adjust accordingly. Just to follow up on that, a related question. At least on the uh, Sactico southbound and parts of the LIE east of Upton, outbound, uh, are closed. Can you, is, is that just for cleaning the roads? Can you talk about just how hazardous conditions are? I don't believe any parts of the long LIE are closed. Uh, I don't want to second guess Google Maps because it's Google. Uh, but uh, no parts of the Long Island Expressway are closed. Uh, maybe they're seeing uh, plows which run in series and uh, the traffic really can't get past a series of plows that are doing the entire road. Uh, but to the best of my knowledge, no parts of the LIE are closed uh, or any other road. But if these roadways do end up freezing, if the temperature just gets too low, how probable could it be that you could end up actually having roads closed? Oh, we have closed roads before. We have done that. Uh, when the, the balance is this, uh, you want businesses to function. You want people to uh, do what they need to do. Uh, but if the situation becomes so dangerous that it's a significant public safety concern, then we close the roads. Uh, and I tend to err on the side of safety. Uh, I've seen, I've been governor long enough, uh, I've seen some frightening situations. I've seen situations where we've lost lives uh, in situations just like this. And uh, from my point of view, nothing is worth uh, endangering human life. So if we get to that point, then we would do road closures. We're not there yet. Well, that would be up to uh, the school districts and the local officials. I think you have to wait to see what the weather condition is and what the temperature actually does tonight and what the roads look like. Thank you. Okay, thank you all.